Hello, everyone. Welcome to our startup talk with how investors make a decision in investing. But before I will start to ask questions, let me introduce myself and our special guest today. My name is Kathleen Martinez. I am one of the founding partners of Startup Venture Capital in Singapore. And on behalf of our partners, I will interview a young investor, project manager of an MNSC company in, in Europe, entrepreneur and MBA candidate. Let us all welcome Sebastian Stahl. How, How are, are you, Sebastian? Sebastian? And how's the weather in Germany today? Hi, Kathleen. I'm pretty fine. Just interrupted some work procedures here at home uh, to have the interview with you. Um, the weather here in Germany is okay. We have uh, uh, April right now, and April always uh, the weather changes from hot to cold, rain, sun, whatever. And right now we have the sunny side of April. So uh, during the day, it's quite warm. At the evening times, it's getting a bit colder, but everyone is quite happy that the winter's is finally over and we are having some heat here. Wow, sounds lovely. And no wonder you look tan today. And I'm really happy for you. Well, I want to tell you something. This is really important before we start our question and answers. You know, after our pitch to investors event in Zoom a few weeks ago, many people have admired your advice and they have been messaging me. They want to hear more from you. So I have no choice but to request you to invite you to be our special guest today. So are you ready for the uh, question and answer now? Of course, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, Seb, knowing you for some years as a friend and business partner, I learned about your background, that you work really hard from being an underdog to the top. You come from a humble background. You made it to a well-reputable university in Germany. And you work for a multinational company in many years until you become a project manager and professional expert in Singapore at a very young age. I'm pretty sure there are many young people like you. And what do you advise to them to be successful at a young age? Well, uh, there are basically two things that I would um, recommend very much, or let's say three things. First of all, you need to stay ambitious. Yeah, If you want to reach something, keep your target on eye, eyesight and, and always go for it. And then the second thing is, you should better think in small chapters. Like uh, everyone has a big dream. Like for example, I want to be in Silicon Valley some, uh, somewhere and, and earn my millions. But these kind of dreams usually are far away. They, there's a long way to go, a lot, a lot of time uh, uh, that need to be um, uh, uh, gone and, and get over. And thinking about all this time, it can be quite frustrating and discouraging because it takes so long to reach it. So it's better to think in smaller portions, like what do I want to reach in three years? What am I doing now to reach it? And also to, to uh, celebrate your little successes in the small chapters more. Like I'm doing now an MBA and um, I know that it takes three years. And after this three years, I have higher qualification. I can use it for this and this and this. And um, you, need to, you need to celebrate these little achievements. This gives you a lot of happiness and also encourages you to move on and do more. And um, yeah, keep an eye on, on, on these little things that are in between you and the big goal ahead. This is the one thing. And the second thing is that you should be open always for alternative routes. Yeah, like you have something in mind that you want to do, that you're maybe good in. And all this is based on whatever you experienced in the past and your impressions that you got. And somewhere your, your, your sight gets quite narrow. So it would be good if you're keeping your eyes open to, to stories, to uh, other people's, uh, what they are doing, wh what they are telling you. And if there is something inside, this is making you what is making you curious or that you think, okay, this is interesting me too. And I can do that too. And it would be really fun. Um, then it's sometimes worse to think about, okay, changing the course and trying something new. And maybe this is even nicer than what you're doing now. Just don't get too closed up. 
because then you're missing chances. I'm always like open for new chances. This is why I stepped into SVC because I uh, saw a chance. I just grabbed it. I, I thought, okay, it will not kill me, but it will be very interesting and an exciting venture. I want to be part of that. So I grabbed it. I could also have said like, oh no, this is like too risky and I don't know and keep my life boring. But I said, no, I want to try this new thing what is also really exciting. And this is something that I really recommend like to everyone outside who is at young age and, and tries to figure out what is his true way yet. Okay. Wow. That's a, a lot of information to dig in. And it's really moved me personally, and I'm pretty sure our audience too. So being an angel, angel investor investing in an early stage business, that is known for high risk. What are your criteria to consider a potential startup to invest in? Well, um, this question is not very shortly to answer to. Um, I would say there's four parts or four criteria that I'm looking into. Yeah. First thing is the team. I want to see that the team is ambitious and passionate about what they are doing because then I know they will stick to it. And I'm also talking uh, actively about team because I do not think that being a one-man show is the right thing for a startup if you want to grow big and complex because then all the pressure of work is just on one pair of shoulders. And for some people, this can be too much. If you're in a team, team can uh, encourage you. Um, you can distribute the weight. You can distribute the work. And also, if you are an investor, it looks more stable because one person, if something happened to him, then all your investors gone. If you're investing in a team and one would exit or something happens that he cannot perform anymore, then there are others who can still carry on the project. This is something for me quite important. And also the team, they must be really into the topic. It's not that... Uh, everything what they are doing should um, base on beliefs. It should be on good market analysis and checking out the competitors, knowing what is going on on their market, which they are targeting. This is also important for the team for me. The second thing is that they need to know their numbers. Numbers is always something uh, most do not look like too exact on. But, you know, I am German. For me, it's maybe like a bit more important than for others. Uh, but it should be important for everyone, um, at least to know, for example, are your assumptions realistic or are you dreaming too big? And this is really too far to, to assume yet. Yeah. Um, are your gross assumptions realistic? Um, do you know what your venture will cost? Do you see everything comprehensively? Do you know all the points that are creating cost in the future when it's like in the next year or the next two years? Something I'm like that, I'm looking very in detail into it because I want to feel that the, that the um, team is not only seeking a dream, they are also, they, they, they check how is the reality. Uh, this is important to see. The third thing is, that I want to have it transparent and structured. Um, I'm someone who needs frequent updates. I want to be hands-on. I want to see what is going on in my invest. And um, it is important for me to see that the, uh, the startup, the founders, they know wh what their money is doing, yeah? what they are spending, and also what is their income. When are they running out of budget? These things, they need to have a regularly uh, eyesight on so that they are not running low on money and suddenly stuck and then they think oh my god now we need to find a new investor and this comes out of nothing that that was very critical for me to see that they are also very sure about or, or secure about their finances and the last thing is that everything between me and the and the startup and also i want to see that the startup members uh, between each other um, need to be um, yeah, the, the contract level must be clear. They need to know that contracts are important for startups because a lot of things can happen and even friendships sometimes can break uh, when it comes to financial points or when someone wants to exit, what happens then? Or if you vote for something for an uh, important um, choice, 
then how, how is it regulated? All these things, they are usually only written down in the contracts. So finding a team that knows that this is an important part of a startup too is also important for me because sooner or later, when we come to an agreement, the contracts need to come into play. So they need to know what to do, how to deal with that. Wow. All I can say is um, you are sounds a very experienced investor. You've been through a lot and combination of experience, knowledge and your personal skills to put it all together. And that's really uh, insightful for, for our audience. So speaking of all those uh, tolerance and acceptance, how do you describe your risk tolerance in business? Well, talking about risk tolerance when you're a business angel is kind of funny. If you see all the people who are investing in safe ETF or safe real estate or to the bank or whatever, these things, they are all low risk. And being a business angel means like your risk tolerance is quite high anyway. Um, so I would say my risk tolerance already is way higher than the average being business angel is not something for everyone um but on the other hand uh there must be some control i, I like to be in control of my money so i am the hands-on type to at least have a little bit of impact then on on what is happening on on my startup invest yeah so from a business angel point of view, maybe there I'm on the lower risk tolerance because I am. I feel like I want to have like at least a bit of control and and work with the team, help them out if there are questions. Um, but from a point of view of the majority of people on earth, being a business angel is quite high risk tolerance, of course. Yes. Um, well. That's, that's actually a good point between comparing uh, risk tolerance low and high, and it actually defines a lot of how you handle your business. Now, my, my, my next question is, many hustlers have built successful startups without completing their university education. Do you think higher education is important to build a startup and why? Well, if you ask importance, I feel like there's also the hidden question if it is necessary. Um, I do not feel like that higher education necessarily makes the better entrepreneur. Um, because what you're learning on university depends on if you're on the topic that is also your startup about. I mean, if I um, study biochemics and then I'm making a startup about IT or whatever, then it doesn't matter if I have a high academic degree. What it shows is that I'm able to follow up on something that is hard to achieve and achieve it. This is something that can, uh, that an, an, an university degree, degree can show me that the person was capable on um, getting an achievement that is hard to get. But on the other hand, like the knowledge that is transported in the studies, basically everything you can also find uh, online, just that you need to get it all together for yourself. But if you're ambitious uh, and if you really want to um, get, get to your goal, then I think everyone is able to find the right information on the internet itself. Now, there are other characteristics that no uh, university can give you. This is like ambition, creativity, passion, team spirit, leadership uh, ability, ability to get up again when you uh, have a throwback and this very often. These skills are, in my opinion, more important for an entrepreneur than just having a high knowledge on a certain, certain topic. Of course, you need knowledge, else you cannot run your business too. But other factors are more important to keep running and also to keep your team together. Yeah. So if you, for example, compare a Harvard student to a let's say someone who has low income or, or lived on the street, who, who learned the business from the street, um, and you compare those two, well, of course, the Harvard guy, he can talk a lot, of, a, a, a lot more swollen than the guy from the street, probably. 
but the, the guy from the street, he knows how to fight and how to get things done and how to survive. This is something the other guy never learned. So both have pros and cons, and it's how you make the best of it and not uh, how high your degree is. Okay. I, I will take that. I think that's a good point, and I think that's reasonable. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we see a lot of startups with both uh, education and uh, street knowledge. And uh, it's not a matter of your education background, actually. It's about your courage and your duties that you are willing to take and the risk that you can handle. But let me just say, Sebastian, let's say someone is going to pitch to you today. What is your advice to the founders in their pitch from the point of view of an investor? Well, a pitch should be short, right? Because no one has enough time. So maybe my answer should be short too, <laughs> shorter than the others. Okay. Um, so first of all, founders need to tell a story yeah, in a short period of time. It should be breathtaking and convincing at best. Um, it, it should show up, where do you come from? Where does your idea come from? And what is the idea about? Then how did you evaluate the idea and how did you calculate the potential success? What did you already realize in your project and how did you analyze the market? And how can it be successful? And then a the last question is, why do you need me now as an investor and not someone else? And especially the market and competitor analysis uh, should be visualized in a way that it's simple, that you can understand it quickly, but also in a way that um, the one who is listening can follow up on the facts. Everyone will do his due diligence. So make your uh, presentation, your pitch as transparent as possible. Yeah? If, if someone asks, where did you go get these facts from? then you should be able to answer them. It should not be something that you just got out of your mind. The things that you present, especially if it comes to market and competitor analyzers, should base on facts. And this is something that I would like to see in a, in a, in a pitch. Yes, I agree with that. Like It's really important for the pitcher to not only share the ideas or problem solving, but to also support it by reference because a lot of startup they just anyhow say I solve this this and that but they don't really have the good resources or they just come up with the idea without supporting the basis so last question give us three bullet points of the importance in building a company okay three bullet points <laughs> yes first of all focus always on what matters most to your project to your idea to your company then Evaluate your decisions and actions each time. Do not do it just at the beginning. You need to see if you do something, what happens. Yeah? If you run a marketing campaign, um, what are the results? Did my invest lead to success? Always control what you have done before. And if necessary, if you see like what I invested now, what I'm doing now is not leading to the success I need, then change the course. And the third thing is don't give up. No matter how many throwbacks you have, if you are still convinced that idea will come up and that, uh, that idea will be successful, don't give up. Even if 100 persons uh, tell you this is bad, but you are very convinced and you know it will work out, stick to it. Go on and do not let, your, let others discourage you. Wow. All I can say is I learned a lot from you today. And I am sure, as well as our audience, you have given not only important information, but also necessary tools for startups to consider in their strategy when they raise an investment. So on behalf of our partners, thank you so much for your time and dedication, Sebastian. Very welcome. Thank you for your invitation. It was nice to talk to you. I'm excited for the next basis of our tech development. So uh, I would like to take this as an opportunity for everyone to wait for our relaunch and download it on Android and iOS. So have a good day or night and follow our social media accounts to find out when we will host another educational webinar for startups. And if you want to request another webinar with Sebastian, all you have to do is to send us a message. <laughs> thank you, Sebastian. And thank you.
Bye. Thank you too, Kathleen. And thanks everyone for watching. Bye. Okay, bye, everyone.